Braising is my favorite cooking technique for cold weather. We've braised so many meats on this channel. The short ribs, the chicken thighs, the pork shoulder, but today we're making a vegetarian braise. We are braising cabbage. As any braise, it has three basic steps. Sear, sweat, and simmer. One of my favorite chefs, Sol El Whaley, made a fabulous video about it last year, which gave me an idea for this dish. Sure, I've braised veggies before, but as a side dish, not the star of the show. But Sola's idea put the cabbage front and center, which was brilliant. This dish lends itself to infinite variations. Sola did it with cashew milk. I've done it with porcini and sour cream sauce. But today, I really want to strip this technique down to its essential elements. I want to minimize the ingredients and the prep and keep it completely plant-based and easy because that's what we often need in a weekday meal. Let's start with the cabbage. I like to use a relatively small head for this dish so that I can fit it all into my pan. Surface moisture prevents browning, so I don't like washing the cabbage for the dishes that require browning. Even if you dry the outside of the cabbage, water will get trapped between the leaves. If the outer leaves are really dirty or bruised, just remove them. Cut the cabbage in half and then cut it into wedges. If I cut my cabbage into eight wedges, I'll expose more surface area to browning. But if my pan was smaller or my cabbage bigger, I might only do six wedges or even four. You'll have to use your best judgment here. Set the largest oven safe pan that you have over high heat and add a couple tablespoons of neutral oil with a high smoke point. In other words, something like canola or grapeseed, but not extra virgin olive oil. When the oil is hot, salt each wedge on both flat sides and place it in the pan. If some wedges don't fit into your pan, you can always cook them in another pan. They only need to be in a single layer during the browning step. During the simmering step, it's perfectly fine to crowd the pan a little. It's a good idea to press down on the wedges in the beginning to keep them flat. The better the contact with the pan, the more they'll brown. If all the oil gets absorbed and the pan feels dry, add more oil. When in doubt, brown more rather than less. Charred veggies are all the rage these days. Sola suggested getting the cabbage almost black, but I prefer dark brown, but not black. Once the first side looks like this, ah, oh, look at all this caramelization. Flip it over and brown the second side. You can try flipping with tongs or with a spatula to see what works best for you. If a few cabbage leaves fall off, it's really not a big deal. It will all taste good in the end. And as always, don't forget the oil. While our cabbage is browning, let's preheat the oven to 350 degrees and prep our aromatics. Today I'm using a diced yellow onion, but you can add carrots and celery. Instead of onions, you can use leeks or shallots. There are lots of options here. I'll also slice a couple of garlic cloves, but you can also mince them or put them through a garlic press instead of slicing. Let's take a look at our cabbage. That looks great. Let's drop the heat to very low and get the cabbage out of the pan and onto a plate. Our searing step is done and we're onto the sweating step. Sweating is just means cooking gently until soft. That's the way aromatic veggies are usually cooked as a flavor base for a soup or a sauce. Now that we'll be using much lower heat, we can switch to olive oil. Add about a tablespoon. Add the onions and the pinch of salt. Give them a good stir, cover, and let them cook until they start to become translucent. I prefer to get my onions slightly brown as well. Not as dark as we got the cabbage, but a little. After the first five minutes, I uncover the pan to help them brown and to make it easier to see what's happening. Covering in the beginning is completely optional. I just find that it speeds things up a little. Add the garlic, another pinch of salt, and cook just until aromatic. Then add some boxed or canned chopped tomatoes and a cup of dry white wine. The measurements are completely flexible here. Since my tomatoes are completely unsalted, I'll give them a pinch. But if yours is salt salted, make sure you taste before adding more salt. Bring it all to a simmer and add the cabbage wedges to the sauce. 
I like to fan them out and it's okay to make them overlap a little to make them fit. Tuck all the loose leaves in the middle and pour in the cabbage juices that accumulated on the plate. Cover the pan and place in the middle of 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. Let's see what we've got. Mm, beautiful. Let's crank up the oven to 450 degrees for the final step. To turn this cabbage into a full meal, I'll add some cooked cannellini beans between the wedges. I'll link to the instructions on cooking the beans in the description below, but you can always use drained canned beans. If you cook the beans yourself, add some of the cooking liquid so that the beans are almost covered. I actually forgot to do this in the video, but don't be like me. <laughs> if you're using canned beans, add a little water or veggie stock or chicken stock. Drizzle everything with a generous amount of olive oil. Place the pan into a 450 degree oven uncovered to get the beans to warm up and the tops of the cabbage to crisp up a bit. This will take about 20 minutes, but it's good to keep an eye on it. And we are done! This is a really hearty and comforting dish. The cabbage turns out butter is soft and so sweet. I find that it's sometimes necessary to adjust the salt in the end. We salted the outside of the cabbage, but until it's all done, it's very hard to salt the inside. So you might want to put some salt on the table and have everyone season to their taste. Even the core comes out completely soft and delicious. If you want to add another dimension to this dish, tap it with sour cream or Greek yogurt or the tahini sauce that I made in my falafel video. Don't be afraid to improvise with this dish. And if you come up with a tasty variation, I'd love to hear about it. Here are more culinary tutorials for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.